Okay, so today we're looking at proactivity. So how, what, what, what are we talking about here? We are going to be talking about how to be more proactive. We'll look at how we've been so far. Are you a reactive person or a proactive person? And all of this boils down to what we've talked about in the past, um, because it's all this with both the leadership, the time management. So all of those things, they work hand in hand, even procrastination. So look at how proactivity comes into play when we are dealing with this, especially in the workplace. But before we start talking about um, what proactivity is and what it isn't, so I want someone to volunteer, maybe one person or two before we move on. So you should name a goal that you are currently working towards. I think we'll have similar goals since we are all working on the um, intensive training, but you can be as specific as you as you like, what's the goal we are currently working on now? Anybody? Anyone wants to share what they are currently working on? Okay, so um, let me go. So for example, my goal, is to, as I tested it, my goal was to like come up with um, next week's career challenge document, both the slide and the um, the challenge document with my with my team. So you prepare the scenarios, what it is you think you can work on. That's what I was. That my goal was just to make um to make the challenge document and make it interactive and straight to the point. So that was my goal. But then when I look at those things, I'll look at what challenges can I face. For example, I'm working, I'm currently working remotely. And um, in my country, for instance, they are like, we don't have stable um, light, power supply and internet. So all of those things, you have to like factor them in and have like an alternative plan. You have to I have to look at, oh, if I don't have light now, what other source or what other internet source do I have to look at? I make subscription on two um, network providers. So if one is down, I just switch to the other. So all of those things is just for, for me to just give example. When you have a goal or you have something you are working towards, and then you'll be able to like envision, even before those challenges comes up, you're able to like envision some of the challenges that you may face. So that way you come up with solution beforehand, such that when those things especially happen, you not just be um, caught on our way and just be beating around the bush like a chicken that the head has been cut off, just running helter skelter and the likes. So that's what we'll be looking at here um, with proactivity. How can you be more proactive with your um, personal life and your professional dealings? So yes, so we'll look at the um, the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Harvey. So when I was preparing this document, I came across this um, this book, and I've taken time to go through some of the other habits that I talked about. But the first habit we talked about, and you were like, even if you not implement every other habit in the books, there are like seven habits. You should try to like try to you should try to implement the first habit, which is being proactive. And what does this mean? It means that you should be responsible for your actions. You should be responsible for your actions. You should not blame them, then your behavior on maybe conditions or circumstances. You should um, assume responsibility for your actions and whatever consequences that follows or if it's rewarding, whatever that follows. You should not be blaming maybe your situations or your team members or things that are not in your control. So that's what being proactive is about. You being responsible and just like how it is, your response and your responsibility, your ability to respond to st um, stuff effectively. So that's what proactivity is about. But then, what is the difference between a proactive and a reactive um, person? So proactive, um, proactive is when you make good choices to be, to prevent something from escalating. Why reactive is when you deal with things that happen when you are not like you are not prepared. Take for instance in a workplace, um, a proactive person 
would already, for if the person is working on a project, would have envisioned some of the challenges that would have come their way, or if they are given a task to do, once they've completed the task, like they will still uh, speak to their manager, oh, I've completed this, what's the next step? And with that, they will be like, um, they are more open to opportunities, more open to learning. But a reactive person, on the other hand, may not be, you will not be well prepared for for things that will not be well prepared for things to happen. And in most cases, a reactive person, they normally fall in the workplace, they normally fall into a routine, whereby you go to work, you have the tasks you want to do, you already have things that you are limited to because they are not open to new experiences or to learn more or to explore. So they just feel and they fall back to the things that they are comfortable with, things they are things that they find convenient. So once their manager or even their team lead gives them a tax, so like they just try to like complete that task. They don't try to think ahead. Like after this, what's the next step? And any of those things, their own is just at the moment, how they feel, what they do. So now, what's the differences between a proactive person and a reactive person? As we've made mention, the proactive people, they do not blame anyone or anything for their circumstances or maybe their condition. They take responsibilities for their action. But a reactive person we will find out like you'll be blaming the circumstances, the situation, or the conditioning that surrounds the person. For example, a reactive person, um, a reactive person will maybe just waking up, may go be, by, um, to bed late, wake up late, and at the end of the day, will just go to work late. So like they are not planning ahead of time, but a proactive person already knows all of these things. Like before the problem comes up, they're already looking for ways to tackle it. And most times a proactive person, their behavior is a product of conscious um, choice that is based on values. And what does this mean? Take for instance, when we were talking, when we started, and then I asked about maybe a goal that you are working on. Say, so, okay, now you are um, a trainee at STEM Academy, the intensive training. So now, you already know your goal. You already know um, your goal. You know what, why you enrolled in this training. So each day you have a schedule you are following. You have like the goals you want to achieve irrespective of maybe when you wake up any circumstance that um, comes along the way for example um maybe on today is tuesday perhaps there was no um, power supply you not make excuses about not getting power supply because there was no power supply that i could not get your work done as a proactive person you know that these things can come up so you already have like a backup plan and all of those things is like is a conscious effort that you make to get the work done and not just oh because um, rain fell very well today so the um we do not have light or the internet or that like you know all those things can arise you know the challenges that can come your way so you already find a way to to overcome them even before they come and when you have those challenges you that's why they say they carry their weather with them because they know what they are pushing they know what it is they are aiming to fulfill so they try as much as possible to make the conscious effort to achieve those their value and their goals but with a reactive person their behavior is a product of conditions could be based on how they feel for example if there's no power supply maybe they're not even feeling motivated on that particular day then plus there was no power supply so they would just come up with the excuse that uh there was no power supply or this and that so that is what reactive person does but and but having said that that does not mean that the a proactive person is not influenced by external stimulus of course you might have planned your day like oh i work from 9 to 12 and i work from this this and you have all of those things planned out but external things that can still like things you do not plan for can still happen but what now differentiates a proactive person from a reactive person is how they react to those circumstances when they come up so for the proactive person they will have because they are um the way they will respond will be based on their values their goals so it will be different not just based on how they feel or if they feel good or any of those things so the way they will respond will be different from the way a reactive person will do even when faced with external um, factors and the last one is that a proactive person their response is value-based choice or response just as we've said before it is based on the values that they've set for themselves but a reactive person they build their lives around others emotion for example a reactive person 
may feel good when other people like we all of us we like to be liked you want people to like you you want them to think good about you but a practice person don't they don't build themselves up around the views of other people about them they understand who they are but a reactive person when maybe someone is not like happy with them or is in a bad mood around them they let their mood their emotions get in the way of um how they respond to the situations so that is the major difference between a proactive person and a reactive person now that we've talked about um proactive person and reactive person you can start imagining and start thinking about how you've been uh, how you've been in your own personal life have you been proactive have you been reactive but before we move on let's look at where you have to analyze before i can finally say oh you're a proactive person or you're a reactive person you have to look at where you focus your energy and time on what you focus them on so here now we have one the circle of influence and we have the circle of concern so what does this mean the circle of concern is basically the things that are out of your control so these are things that are out of your control why the circle of influence they are things that are within your control for example if you are working on a project with a team and perhaps you are the team lead and then you have this um team member that is not contributing that is not contributing effectively to the team maybe the person is always late although if you give them tasks they are they don't uh, submit their tasks on time they are just maybe they, they come up with serious ex um, different excuses as to why they are they unable to do those things or why they are submitting it late as a team lead, you have to understand, like, the persons, um, though you address the person's action, you can talk to them. But at the end of the day, you have to understand, like, those things, maybe the way the person behaves, it's out of your control. So as a proactive person, you, you should you look at what is it that you can influence. Either you, so as a proactive person, you can decide to maybe talk to the person, look at how you can delegate the tax to other uh, members, perhaps the, the team member, have um, maybe some personal issues or is dealing with something at the time so you try to understand what, why the team member is always submitting it you try to um look for other how you can get the tax done even if the person does not contribute much and you understand like you are the team lead so you look for solutions that even if one team member is um, insufficient or is um, not doing the most of the tasks that is assigned. You look for ways that you can, the things that are within your control that you can influence. Rather than focusing on, oh, this person is always drawing us back, she's, all, she's not responding to emails on time, that was why we submitted, you are complaining to your manager perhaps, that's why we submitted the tax leads. You don't do that. You focus on things that are in your control, and that's what you will work on. So that's what differentiates a person who is, um, a proactive person from a reactive person so now let's look at these reflections together and here you just like think silently and just reflect on you just take about 15 seconds so what are you currently spending majority of your focus and time on what is it the circle of concern or the circle of influence are you always focusing on things that are out of your control or the things that are within your control uh, so even maybe you look at it in your professional life, you look at it in your personal life, are you always the one that like come up with excuses, always complaining about things instead of um, looking for ways to go about it, like solving the solution or the challenges. So just take a moment to think about it. So what are you currently spending the majority of your focus and time in? Are you, is it in the circle of concern or the circle of influence? So you don't have to just think about it. Then the second reflection here is, are you currently being personally effective as you can in your professional life? So just take a moment to think about that too. As you are a trainee at STEM Academy here and with the intensive training program, just analyze if you are um if you are contributing effectively to your this training, to your professional life as much as you can are you doing the best you can with the resources you have so just think about it or if something does not go right you just look for excuses you know are you the type that maybe even before the um the challenge comes up you already have excuse to give rather than solving the problem so just think about it 
Then the next one is what can you do today to expand your circle of influence to build more positive energy in your professional life? So what can you do to focus more on things that you can control rather than things that are out of your control? Now that you've understood like, oh, you have a um, circle of influence and circle of concern. So just think about that. So before we move on, I would like to ask, does anyone know the, um, the serenity prayer? Who is familiar with the serenity prayer? You can just um, show with your hand or you unmute. Anyone? It's a very like popular prayer, I think. Anyone? The serenity prayer. Okay, so um, let me just explain. So the serenity prayer is is um, is a prayer that is recited mostly by um, recovery, like recovering drug addicts and even alcoholics. So when they go for the anonymous meeting, the AA meeting, so they recite the prayer even before the meeting and it's just basically saying god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference so it's basically just highlighting um focusing on the things that are within your control and you realizing that like, some things are not within your control so you don't have to spend much of your time or your energy focusing on those rather you look at those things that are within your control and how you can go about them so yeah, so now that I've said the prayer, does anyone like remember or maybe you've come across it before now? Okay, yeah. All right, so um let's move on. So we've talked about proactivity, the differences between proactive and reactive response um person. So now let's look at how we can identify reactive responses and maybe we can look at it and realize that we've been reactive as well or maybe in some situations you've been reactive so the first one is you should look at your thought patterns how you think are you the type of person that in the we have the haves and the bees so the haves they are the like the reactive people and the bees are like the proactive people so what this means is they have, they have this thinking about, oh, I'll be happy when I have my promotion. I'll be, um, if I have, maybe I'll be promoted. If only I had a degree, I would have been the all, I would have been promoted only if I had a degree. Or if I could just have more time to myself, I'll get this done. Like they have, they focus more on things they don't have. It, like they focus more on things they don't have or they limit themselves to the things they already have. But as for the peace type of thinking, the are times that they, they are self-aware and they know they don't they are they don't have something, but they realize that they can be more than what they really are now. So their thinking process is just like, oh, I can be more honest, I can be more patient, I can get my degree and get the promotion. I can like you I can be happy irrespective of it. So they have this mindset of um that they can be anything they want to be they they realize that they are the one responsible for their um life choices and they are the one responsible for their situation not the other way around and then the second one in the thought pattern is the practice and um, the reactive response is always this all or nothing or even you end up um, over generalized over generalizing for example if you have someone that maybe you, as a team lead, then one of your team member comes late to the uh, meeting, maybe the person came late like yeah. twice. So like when you want to address this and then you go, uh, you're always late to the meeting, like you are just um, over generalizing. It's able to like um, address the specific occasion or the specific, um, the specific action that is in place. So you don't, a reactive response is not like overgeneralizing. And in such case, instead of the team um, member that was late to maybe give an explanation and you trying to understand, most of it can be defensive. And another thing is with overgeneralizing, over generalizing. for example, maybe you're working on a project, you're running a code and it does not work well. 
like a reactive response can be like oh uh, why am i always like failing on this why am i always like just all these negative all those type of things like over generalizing but we have a proactive response we will like try to look for a solution to the problem then the next one in identifying a reactive response is the behavioral science yeah we have impulsive action avoidance or withdrawal and then reacting aggressively so these are some signs of a um, behavioral signs of a reactive response so this is they are, the way they respond is all is majorly based on how they feel based on the emotions rather than thinking the situation through then the next one we have the cognitive signs and here is a reactive person will um always fail to consider alternative perspective and they are not thinking before acting or even they lack um so they have they lack reflection self-reflection and that's why at the end of the day they end up blaming other people for things that go wrong instead of them looking inward and looking at themselves and how they can improve the situation then here how to be a proactive leader last week we talked about being a good leader so and one of the things we talked about is you being proactive so here how can we be a proactive leader you have to think long term, so you should embrace the long term thinking over the short term gains, and you should try to seek. Um, you should try to understand other people. You should try to understand other people and also develop organizational skills like your time management skills, your puppy skills, your people skills, and the likes. And you should be open to ideas. And most importantly, you have the calm demeanor, just like how we talked about when you said earlier. Um, as a leader, you should first of all self-lead yourself. You should be self-aware, you should self-reflect. And then having a calm demeanor, you should self-refrain. So now let's look at some of these scenarios and then we'll analyze um, the reactive response and the proactive response. So you have a much more understanding of a reactive and the proactive response and how you can, um, and then you look inward if you are being reactive or proactive. So the first scenario here is a team is working on a project with a tight deadline. One of your team members, Yeshao, has just informed the team lead that he won't be able to complete his part of the project on time, which will delay the entire project. So the reactive um, response goes like this. Yeshao, I understand that unexpected challenges arise, but delaying the project will impact the entire team hard work and jeopardize our deadline. How much of a delay are we looking at? Then the proactive response is somewhat like this. Thanks for letting me know. Can you help me understand what's causing the delay? Is there anything we can do to get you the resources or support you need to get back on track? Let's work together to find a solution. What else can we involve? What else can we evolve to help us meet the deadline? What can we adjust or prioritize to minimize the impact of the delay? Now, looking at the scenario and the reactive response and the proactive response, so what differences can you spot of these um, two scenarios, of these two responses? What differences can you spot? Hello? Are you guys there? Can you hear me? Yeah, so what differences can you spot from these two responses? What's happening? You don't want to, if you don't want to do speak, you can just type in the chat box or should I call names instead? okay so um let's look at this scenario together let's say a team is working on a project with a tight deadline one of the team members Yishawa, has just informed the team lead that he won't be able to complete his part 
of the project on time, which will delay the entire project. If you look at the reactive response, it seems like it's a good response as well. But you, if you, you will notice something there. In the react, um, reactive response, it's focusing more on the problem and does not even offer any um, sort of any um, suggestions for how they can still get the project done on time. Unlike the proactive response, even like addressing, oh, acknowledging that, oh, thank you for letting me know. Then now move further as to understand the team, um, the team member. Why, why, do, why, can I understand what's causing the delay? Then after that, now ask that, oh, well, how, what can we do? How can we still get the job done? So this, like the proactive person, is looking for a way to uh, is looking for a solution to the problem to still get the project done on time to meet the deadline unlike the reactive response that is just focusing more on the pro on the problem rather than looking for a solution to it so um do you understand that you can just use the reaction button okay okay thank you so we'll look at the second scenario and here you really want to like spot the differences. And so in this second scenario, so your manager, Rachel, has just assigned you a new project that you feel is beyond your capabilities and expertise. The project requires skills and knowledge you don't possess and you are concerned about failing. So the reactive response is, hi, Rachel, I appreciate the trust you have in me to handle this project, but I have to be honest with you. I'm not sure I'm the right person for this task. The requirements are beyond my skill sets and expertise, and I'm worried about not meeting expectations. But the react and the proactive response is, Rachel, thank you for considering me for this project. I appreciate the opportunity. However, I want to ensure I deliver high quality results can we discuss the project requirements and expectations in more detail? What resources or training can I assess to develop the necessary skills? Are there any team members or mentors who can guide me through this project? Let's work together to create a plan for success. Now, looking at the scenario, the reactive response and the proactive response, what differences can you spot in those two responses? What differences can you spot? I will call out names. It seems you guys are tired. Of, well, I'll call out names. So um, let me see. Abraham. So what differences can you spot there? If you don't want to like unmute and talk, but I'll prefer you do that. But if you don't want to, you can just type in the chat box. Okay. Ibrahim, are you there? Okay. What about um Abu Bakr? Yes. Uh, hello. Hello. I cannot hear you clearly. Can you like um maybe move closer to your mic or speak louder? Yes, uh, my network connection is a bit had an issue. Okay, sorry about that. So, okay. Um, I think our worker cannot really speak much now. His network connection is, but you can just type in the chat box. So let's move on to um. Let me see. Okay, so we have Michael Abdurrahman. Go on. Okay, uh, I see the reactive response is uh, just uh, focusing on the, the problem, but the proactive response uh, try to find a solution to it. Okay, yeah. So the reactive is like focusing on the rest, on the problem, but the proactive is like trying to find a solution there. Then um, Michael, go on, what other difference can you spot? Okay, the, the reactive response is like ignoring the problem and it is uh, hesitant, but in the pro proactive, 
even if the task is difficult, it is, uh, it asks, he asks the help from the group and uh, the main force and team members. Yeah, that's true. So, um, Abu Bakr, you can go on and speak on. Okay. Yeah, go on. Okay, so the reactive response seems like uh, it's more Rahel too. They can't hear you clearly. It's breaking. Okay, like it's uh, how how one now? Yeah, it's better now. Okay, so uh, it seems like uh, reactive response is the default response, and that it represents that what she couldn't do. Maybe it would be to the default response. So the proactive is thinking further, like thinking critically what she needs, I guess. Yes. So um, the proactive is, and the reactive is just looking at the, the skills level the person is at the moment, and it's not like looking further. But with the proactive person, the person is open to learn more skills. The person knows that, oh, acknowledges that they have the limitation, they may not have the required skills, they are, but they are open to, to learn more, to complete the tasks, and they think ahead. But the, the reactive is just like limiting themselves to the skills they already have, rather than looking at the skills that they can acquire along the line. So yes, so um, now let's look at the challenge. But before we do, do you have any questions before, on this slide? Maybe right from the beginning, any question? Okay, so um, since you don't have any question, let's take a look at the challenge document and see what we have there. Okay, so here it is on proactivity and the deadline is on Saturday, 1st of June by 8 p.m. UTC. So to succeed in the workplace is essential to be proactive. This means taking the initiative, anticipating challenges, and finding solutions without being told what to do. Proactive employees are, they are a valuable asset to any organization, driving innovation, improving efficiency, and boosting productivity. So being proactive is the first habit discussed in the seven habits of highly and we have attached a note to the It is more just taking the initiative. It's a lot of response. Okay. It is more than just taking the initiative. It's about taking responsibility for our lives and choices. We have the power to choose our responses and make things happen. Proactive individuals, they recognize this responsibility and don't blame external circumstances for their behavior. Instead, they, are, they make conscious choices based on their values, not their feelings. In contrast, reactive individuals are often affected by their environment and the behavior of others. They let external factors dictate their mood and performance. Proactive put in people, on the other hand, are driven by their values and can maintain a positive attitude and high performance regardless of the circumstances. So the tax here is you are a data engineer at a company that provides data analytics services. Your boss, Rachel, sends you an email about data pipeline issues. And this is the email. She said, hi team, one of our clients is experiencing issues with their data pipeline. The data is not being updated in real time, and they are seeing delays of up to 24 hours. The client is frustrated and threatening to cancel their subscription. Additionally, the client mentioned, one, the data is incomplete with some, with some table missing entirely. Two, the data schema has changed, but the pipeline hasn't been updated to reflect this. 
The client has tried to contact the support team multiple times, but receives no response. And then I say, please investigate and resolve this issue as SAP. So please investigate and resolve this issue as SAP. We can't afford to lose clients due to pipeline issues and poor communication based nature. So this is just the background to give you more information about what's happening. So the one is that the data pipeline is built using Apache Beam and Google Cloud Data Flow. And then the data is sourced for multiple databases and API. The client's data schema changed recently, but the pipeline wasn't updated. And the support team has been overwhelmed with requests leading to delayed responses. So what you have to do here is, assuming you are the data engineer, you should create a reactive email and a proactive email, uh, email reply to Rachel. So you should create email that responds reactively and one that responds proactively. Then once you've done that, you should write down and explain four differences, at least four differences, that you spot between your reactive e uh, email reply and your proactive email reply. So once you've done that, you share a story about a situation at Ten Academy where you took a proactive approach. So what happened? What did you do? And how did it turn out? So what three lessons did you learn from this experience that will help you continue to grow and improve in the future? And then the fourth one is you share a detailed story about the situation also at STEM Academy, where you reacted to a situation without thinking ahead. What happened? How did you respond? What was the outcome? And what lesson did you learn from this experience that will help you improve and become more proactive in the future? Then reflecting on like your general habits, your general way of responding to challenging behavior, do you tend to be proactive or reactive? Now that we have talked about um, a reactive person and a proactive person, just reflect on yourself. Are you proactive? Are you reactive in what situations? So in challenging situations, do you tend to be proactive or reactive? What are your strengths and weaknesses in this regard? So what strategies can you use to improve your proactive behavior and minimize reactive responses? So once, you, once you've done that, you should create a PowerPoint presentation with a maximum of 12 slides that detail your answers to the tax given above. So that is what you have to do for this week's challenge on proactivity. So you create, um, a reactive email response and a proactive email response to Rachel uh, states at least four differences. Then reflect on your 10 academy um, experience where you've been proactive, where you've been reactive, and then share your experience, what you've learned. Then in general, you should look at how you approach challenging situations. Are you reactive? Are you proactive? So that is what this one, the tax is about. So any question on that before we move on? Any question? So I assume you understand what you are asked to do. You can just use the um, emoji to react. Hello, is anyone there? All right, great. So um, before we call it a day and we move on, so I just want to ask, like you can just um, use the reaction button or you type in the chat box. From what we've talked about, do you identify as a reactive person or a proactive person? And maybe in what situations, just if you want to speak. So do you identify as a proactive person or a reactive person? So just look, take a look at you, the way you respond to situations. Are you proactive or you have been like reactive? It's five over 15. Which one is the 85? Which one is the 15? Okay, so Daisy says she has been um, proactive. Okay. 
Aruba, which one is 85? Which one is 15? Okay, it's 5% proactive, 15% reactive. Okay. Okay. So I am um, Abraham. I think I'm reactive and proactive at the same time. How so? Do you like want to explain? All right, so um, that is all we have for this week on careers challenge. Well, another careers challenge is coming up on Thursday. So, and the deadline for both submission is on Saturday. It, so, it depends on the energy, I guess. Oh, that is a reactive process response. So, it depends on the energy. Okay. It seems like it yeah, depends on the energy, like, yeah, it depends on the... <laughs> On the circumstance on how you feel okay so now that we've added like we know more about um proactive and reactive i believe we can work towards that and implement like what we've learned so far because the careers and session is not just to get the assignment submitted but it's for it to reflect on yourself you know when at the end of the um, 10 academy training and you eventually secure a job, it's not only about the technical skills that matter, that matter, but even the career, you know, the way you relate with people, the way you respond to situation, how you lead, and that's what the career team is about, and the career session is about. So we've talked about procrastination, the time management, and I believe like with the time management session, we're already, implement, we already implementing some of the techniques we talked about, even the, with the procrastination and being a good leader um, and working in teams, all of those things, just put them in practice because it's not just about completing the tasks and submitting the assignments, but how you like implement them in your everyday life, even as you are a training at um, 10 Academy, just implement them one step at a time. The day before, like for this week now, you know how your schedule is. So even the, the day before, you already know um, your, how your day will look like. And from what we've talked about, you will take initiative. If there's any challenge you can um, foresee, you already know how you tackle it. And always have your plan A and your plan B, just in case if the plan A doesn't work out. And if possible, you can also come up with a plan C. So all of those things work, is very important, along with the technical skills. So um, with that being said, I think we have come to the end of today's session. So have a nice day and see you all on Thursday again. Yeah. All right. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>